you see the headlines every day. $5,000 fine for a garden in a guy's backyard he's had for 15 years. They're coming out with zoning. New articles. You couldn't make it up. Georgia man fined $5,000 for growing vegetables. That's being reported uh, by the newspapers. I mean, this is incredible. Uh, here's another one. Uh, 60 days in jail for overgrown grass in New York State. WVLA television. And they say it's good. Here's another one. Social engineering bill in Senate will force you into city. And I've read it. It is the Agenda 21 called Livable Communities. A blueprint for transformation of society into federal control will enforce federal sustainable development zoning and control of local communities. will create a massive new development bureaucracy. will drive up the cost of energy and heat and cool your home. will drive the cost of gasoline and a way to get in your car. will force you to spend thousands of dollars in your home in order to comply. It's basically the sections of the uh, carbon tax bill they couldn't get through. Here's another one. U.S. House puts oceans under U.N. Senate vote will seal the deal. It's got quotes from Congressman, it's passed the House, John Boehner's office saying, yes, it's happening. Probably going to pass this week or next. I mean, I mean, this it's H.R. 3534, thinly disguised takeover. And deals with energy. Puts our oil drilling under U.N. control. Remember, the U.N. was created by the mega corporations and the Rockefellers so they can sign the authority over to them. People keep saying, well, the U.N. created, the U.S. created the U.N., so then why do Americans want out of the U.N.? Or, well, it, it, it's a global corporate construct to then come back in and take over. That's why our traitorous government funds it, because it's controlled by the very same robber barons. Now, for the rest of this hour, we're going to do a quick update uh, later on what's happening with the economy. But uh, we are joined by an amazing lady who we've had on the broadcast before, and she lives right outside Austin, Judith McGeary a lawyer and family farm operator, farmandranchfreedom.org. Earlier this week, they just had a conference in Austin. They've got a House and Senate bill, which could be interpreted, and I've read the language, to say you can't make strawberry jam and give it to your neighbor or sell it. And you see them SWAT teaming Amish and all of this happening. And it just shows you the mindset. We just spent an hour about Mao Zedong using food as a weapon. Now the U.N. says they'll use food as a weapon. That's a quote. Uh, we have our own government saying that. They don't want you self-sufficient. They want you under their control as prisoners. And under the carbon taxes, they say Germany's already passed a law by 2020, 10 years from now, no single family homes are allowed. They're talking about bulldozing them and building smart homes. This is total tyranny. First, they tell you what type of toilet you can have. Then they tell you what type of light bulbs, little sim simple things, what type of air conditioning freon. Then it's, oh, we're going to have a home inspection. Oh, you got to have a license for a, uh, to have a garden. Oh, you know, we've got to inspect your garden to make sure you're not growing marijuana. That's uh, Tulsa, Oklahoma has been calling for that. We're going to go to break, come back with her, and really flesh this out. But farmandranchfreedom.org is the website. And it's time for farmers and ranchers to not just go to the football game on Friday nights, to not just go drink beer, to not just go complain at county commissioners, to really get aggressive and realize you're under attack. Mega agribusiness globally states they're passing regulations worldwide to take over your farm and ranch, to put regulations on you that are not enforced against Tyson Chicken and ConAgra and others, Monsanto, and to let Monsanto come on your land and kill, spray your crops to see if any of their you know genes are in the crops because if the plants don't die, they know uh, that uh, you know it's got some of their genetics. All of this, this is a scientific takeover. The, the 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 mega corporations want world government; they want it now. So Judith McGeary will have the floor when we come back to walk through all of this. But you just heard me have one of the top you know, head of his department at a prestigious university on about communism about collectivism, about using food as a weapon, and he agreed it's now happening here. Okay, it, look, it's really happening. Okay, that's not hyperbole. They want to do this here. Our government is totally criminal. Stay with us. Okay, uh, let's now go to Judith McGeary of Farm and Ranch Freedom uh, to break down what we're dealing with. Uh, Judith, t tell us how you first got into this, the overall view of what's behind this agenda, and as a lawyer, being able to research the bills, what we're currently facing with the legislation? You don't ask a lot at one time. <laughs> uh, I got into it. Um, 
I, at the time, I was a practicing attorney, and my husband and I have our own small farm, and I heard about the animal identification system, and they were pushing it here in Texas. So the more I researched it, the uglier it looked, and I ended up leaving my legal practice and creating the Farm and Ranch Freedom Alliance, along with a group of other farmers and ranchers who were very worried about what NAIS could do. Um, and so at first, our focus was very, fo- very closely focused just on NAIS. But the more you get into this, the more you realize how many threats there are. And this year, um, we've put a lot of energy and a lot of focus onto the food safety bills in Congress. Actually, for about the last year and a half now, we've been doing that. Because what's happening is that the federal government is looking at the food, sa- the food system. And there are a lot of really legitimate concerns about food safety in this country. I don't feel secure about the quality of the food in the grocery stores. And unfortunately, that's what 95% of people are eating. But the problem is they're using that as an excuse to create a massive federal regulatory scheme that covers all the food in this country, you know, right down to, as you were saying, you know, someone who makes a few jars of jam and, you know, sells them at a local farmer's market or, you know, at the local, you know, park or fair stand or, you know, flea market you know, for a couple of weeks a year would be faced with really complicated, convoluted federal regulation, and and frankly, most of them won't be able to deal with it. That's that's the short version. That's the nutshell. Well, let's go back to the beginning. The Animal ID, Premises ID, how they tried to force it through. Now they've claimed they've backed off, but they're just coming back with it again. Let's break down the full-spectrum takeover, big agribusiness, on record, financing this. Uh, They exempt themselves from most of the rules. It's clearly designed uh, to shut down family farms and ranches. They're now trying to say hobby farms aren't uh, eligible for small tax exemptions. They're doing everything they can to shut down the family farm. There is a undeclared war going on against our family farms and ranches. There's been an undeclared war against our family farms and ranches for a long time. You know, the official federal government policy for decades has been get big or get out. And that that has been the attitude. And what we've seen, whether it's animal ID, whether it's the tax exemptions you're talking about, whether it's the food safety bill, is that the federal agencies, the USDA and the FDA, you know, have a revolving door going between them and big ag. So Michael Taylor, who's now the head of food safety at, at FDA, You know, worked for Monsanto, went to work for FDA, went back to work for a lobbying firm that worked for Monsanto, is now back at FDA. And and you can find story after story after story like that. And this is who they talk to. It's the only people, for the most part, that they talk to. And so they write regulations and they write programs that are based on the interests of how the big agribusiness companies work, the Cargills, the Tysons, Monsanto, ADM, Grocery manufacturers of America, you know, all of the big groceries in the country have had a major hand in this bill. You know, this is backwards. You know, if if you want good quality food in this country, we need to get away from the big agribusiness. We need to renew our small farms, have local foods, people being able to buy from people they trust, um, and, and focus on decentralized local food systems, and that is not in, you know, FDA's agenda. But the good news is, but you're on the front line, so correct me if I'm wrong, there is a renaissance of food co-ops, of farmers' markets, of even lawyers and uh, doctors and uh, well-to-do educated people fleeing to the country, uh, becoming truly sustainable, not the UN uh, eugenics counterfeit of that, and uh, people have been voting with their pocketbook, Ten years ago, you couldn't find organic food on store shelves. Now it's everywhere. Uh, You couldn't find non-GMO hormone milk. Now you can't find the milk with the hormones. Of course, they still sell that it's added to the other products and cheese and things. And from my research, a lot of this attempt to really take over or accelerate the takeover of family farms and ranches is in response to the movement they're seeing by people uh, to basically come out of Babylon. I think that's a very good um, assessment of the situation. There is. It's, it's wonderful to watch the local foods movement grow. And it's not just the farmers. It's the farmers and the consumers working together. Um, and that's, you know, it's critical. And we are natural partners. The 
farmers are producing good food for the consumers, and the consumers are providing a fair living wage for farmers. And it's, it's fantastic. And, and if I this think- continues... The children get to drive out once a week to the farms they like. They get to see the cows, the goats, the chickens. Then they get the idea to move to the country, put in a few plum trees, start making their own jam. We start becoming humans again who are meant to be out in the sunshine and the dirt. And we go from being 90% urban to maybe 20, 30% rural. That panics the social engineers. And it's and it goes counter to what they've been saying for decades, which is the, the the stated goal has been to have fewer and fewer farmers. I mean, it's not a secret. They think that farming is, you know, a, a low-value profession. We want as few people in it as possible, get people off the land. They bring in the illegals with big agribusiness to undercut the real farms. Exactly. There's uh, the, the big meat packers. No, it's a mechanized war. It's a mechanized, stated U.N. plan. Sorry, go ahead. Well, no, not at all. But... Um, the thing is, what, what we're describing, you know, this wonderful renaissance, as you were saying, you know, 10 years ago, it was very hard to get local foods or organic foods in many places. And 10 years ago, big agribusiness didn't worry about us. We were too small to worry about. It wasn't a big deal. Now, the local foods movement is growing by so many leaps and bounds, and there's so much energy behind it and so much publicity. You know, books like Omnivore's Dilemma and movies like Food, Inc. And I'm going to say this right now and then have you continue. If you want to defeat the New World Order, folks, start a garden. It is the act of becoming a human again. It is the act of the agrarian culture that will bring us back to humanity. It's one of the single things we can do to cut off their power and their control. And so this is the revolution. Sorry, go ahead. So I I think that's a wonderful statement, reconnecting with our food, growing your own garden, you know, getting to know the people who produce your food, going out to the farms. Reconnecting with the food is central. And what we have to do is we have to protect this because what's happening is there's a huge amount of momentum behind this movement. And if it's allowed to continue, it will continue to grow by leaps and bounds and become the dominant movement. Unfortunately, if things like Senate Bill 510, the current food safety bill, pass, then it's likely to really cripple the movement. And you notice they've already built up these paramilitary armies of Enviro, police, and others. Every day I hear about them going after small farms, small gardens, Amish, I mean SWAT teams, undercover uh, at the farmer's markets here in Austin. There's undercover cops everywhere. I mean, they're coming. And, and that really is one of the core problems we're facing right now. Specifically, you know, they've got Senate Bill 510 in the Senate. It's been stalled there for months. But... Now there's all this momentum to pass it because of the the egg recall. You know, half a billion eggs recalled. FDA needs more power. And that was a mega producer that did that again. But it won't be won't be pointed at them though. Exactly, and that's the thing. I mean, what what should be coming out from this egg scare? What what people should realize is that FDA isn't using the power it has now to regulate the big agribusiness. They don't go after the mega factory farms. They go after small co-ops and local producers and raw milk and all of these things FDA doesn't like. And simply giving the same agency more power is not going to improve the food supply. When it's a revolving door with big agribusiness that states it wants to shut you down, stay there. Folks, you want to be part of the revolution for free humanity. This is one of the central areas as important as the Second Amendment and free speech. We'll be right back.